My guest today, just returned from Los Angeles, is a working actor, well known in Australian and international productions with 140 IMDb credits and also an acting teacher and mentor. In Australia, he's known for great roles in Wolf Creek, Animal Kingdom, the Dr. Blake Mysteries and also Wentworth. Internationally, he is known for some awesome productions such as Saving Mr. Banks and Criminal Minds, but especially for the role of Keith McGee in the acclaimed series Sons of Anarchy. He's the father of two great actors who have surely listened to his advice, Cody and Shanoa, both making great waves in the acting arena, with Cody recently nominated for an Oscar. Surely they've both learned from their father, who now also passes on his knowledge through training and mentorship in his program, The Actors Intensive, which I'm fortunate to be currently participating in. Uh, please welcome to the show, Mr. Andy McPhee. Hey there, how you doing, mate? Good morning. And everybody else who I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> they could see us, so that's good. Thank you very much for coming on. I know you've got a, a busy schedule a, ahead of you. So, Andy, you've just arrived back from LA this week. So, um, welcome home. Welcome back to Australia. Sure. Yeah, right. Already got a cold. Haven't had a cold for probably oh, years Seriously? and got the heater on and rugged up. <laughs> it's like coming from 90 degrees every day to this. I mean, I don't, I love being back home, but. Getting used to the colds a little bit, uh, bit tough. Yes, definitely, definitely. And yeah, your um, family's here. I saw you with a video. I think it was your. Is it your granddaughter that was beating you on the top of your head? Uh yes. <laughs> is that good to yes. be back with family? Yeah. Uh, makes it tough when you're away. You miss your family, sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it does. Because uh, pretty much all, all my family's here. Um, you know, one of my children is still in uh, in the US, and the other one's in uh, London for a little while, but. Yeah, just uh, time to come home, mate. Um, back to Australia and uh, you know, settle the the grassroots down here, and just go back to the states when I need to. That's awesome. Now I know you were born in uh, good old Adelaide, my hometown, where I was born. So no, no, no. no. Oh, no, is that... no. I, was... I don't. I, I got to change that for some reason. I don't know why, how it got there. I think it's only because I started acting in. Uh, I was born right here, minutes away from where I am now in Glenroy, and family lived in Kilmore, and uh, yeah, so yeah, I tried to change it, but it didn't work, so no, Adelaide's uh, a great place, but I wasn't born there. Well, there you go, because um, I'll go on with the rest of the question in a second, but I had a, a, a side note here to, um, to mention to you that a Google search says that you're six foot six, uh, you're either 89, 94, or 121 years old, and you're worth $9 million. <laughs> So um, yeah, I saw that once. <laughs> I, I would like the last part to be right. So nine million, <laughs> yep. yeah. And, and I won't ask you your age, of course, but um, I'm uh, seventy, mate. I turned 70. seventy in October. Awesome, awesome. Mm. I love it. And six foot six is that close to your height? Because I haven't met you in person. Ah, uh, no. As they say, um, as they say, uh, as you get older, you shrink, and uh, <laughs> so I think it's probably around about six five and a bit now. Wow, wow, well, there you go. That's cool. I don't know where the shrinking me. came from, but <laughs> <laughs> all right. Can you give us a, a quick background on your life growing up? Um, where you started, um, uh, grew up at school, etc., and how you got into acting? How that journey took you from um, from uh, uh, Victoria for Australia to Los Angeles? Yeah, I was born in uh, Glenroy, but the family lived in Kilmore for a long time. I think. At that time, I may they may have been living in Kilmore, and then we went to Melbourne. I was born in uh, St George's in Kew, or St Andrews, I think, um, and then back to Kilmore, and then eventually the family moved to Glenroy. So that's where I spent, or probably up till about uh, maybe four years old, and then we went to Perth because my dad was a um, uh, manager at Dunlop Tyres, so he travelled a lot. Uh, we ended up in Perth for a few years uh, from Perth. We came back to uh, Blackburn, uh, went to Blackburn Primary, and from Blackburn we went to Borwin, and from Borwin, uh, I, you know, once I left school, I went to Adelaide, and Adelaide, and you know, uh, relationships and uh, children coming into the world, and um, all that sort of stuff. Uh, how the acting started um, was I was a professional wrestler. Um, I took that up after I finished doing judo. I did judo in Adelaide for a long time. It was a first stand. Not particularly good at, but good in my own way, you know. Um, yeah. Won a few tournaments and then lost a lot. <laughs> uh, did a bit of uh, um, 
you know, boxing, not good at that either. Didn't like getting hit. Um, no but does. still, you got to give everything a go. Um, I love it. Had, had a variety of jobs, you know, like many, many different jobs. School was quite I, – I, like a lot of people, I didn't really like school. I did pretty – miserable at school like you know didn't pass but get kept down in year one got kept down again in uh fourth form uh passed one year because my dad said you better pass this year so i did and even my mate of over nearly uh 55 years i think we've been friends i uh, got to catch up with him yet uh, he'll always remember that third year in high school because i passed everything with plus 90 percent you know um, awesome. it's only because i put my mind to it uh, was always in a lot of trouble, caused a lot of trouble right through my life, uh, even into adulthood, you know, um, not dealing with uh, things from childhood, which, you know, a lot of us go through that, uh, you know, broken relationships. Um, uh, probably I was the cause of pretty much all of them. Um, and then uh, went to, you know, just... I did landmark anyway. I don't care what anyone thinks about it. I did landmark. Um, it's a great program. Uh, a lot of people think it's a cult, which is a lot of bullshit. It's not. Uh, I did that for six and a half years, became an introduction leader there. And that just helped me. Like landmark is great because uh, um, it, uh, it just helps you. Like a lot of Tony Robbins stuff, and it helps you see okay. where your past is and what the issues are. So it's very similar, you know, uh, not the same, but sort of similar idea oh. so i did that for a long time and uh had about 30 of my friends uh ended up doing it and wow. some some enjoyed it some didn't um but it helped me out a lot and then it ended up uh started getting back into my coaching again and creating um a lot of youtube channels with one of my autism clients doug kenny I've who's seen not that. doing too well at the moment oh no yeah he's not doing too well he's in he's still in hospital at the moment because um, he deals with uh, bipolar 2 and high-functioning autism and medication and ah. uh, becomes quite uh, overwhelmed and manic. So uh, the seven years I've known him, or six and a half, uh, he's never had issues. The last three months he's been in and out of hospital. So, oh, that's not good. Uh, but he's coming out today, I think. He's in Arizona, so we hope that you know, everything's okay and he's adjusting to the medication. But if anyone wants to check it out, uh, it's relentless and unstoppable. Mm. on youtube it's a great channel but uh, we started with doug i interviewed him because of his amazing weight loss and his drive to be better and not to, you know try not to be um feeling he's different from other people and uh anyway that led into interviewing like we got a thousand videos i think and a million views over the last two years so beautiful well, that's um, awesome but yeah so that's a bit of a snapshot um uh definitely not a no one is, but definitely not a perfect human being. You know, there's still times where you, um, you know, you 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 just uh, slip back into that old past habits, and you know, miss you know things go haywire, and then you just <laughs> got to look at what happened and come out of it. But yeah, back in Australia, glad to be here. A lot of teaching, um, a lot of teaching. I do a bit of uh, conflict resolution training, which is where I'm heading today. After this, uh, got quite a few film projects coming up. And uh, already knocked a couple on the head since I've been here. So, yeah, just yeah. good to be back in the cold in Australia. <laughs> yeah, you're um, very, very busy, which is um, one of th one of the things you're trying to push on us in the in the training. And I, I won't give too much away on the training because that um, that we will encourage other people to do it. But that's what you're focusing on is getting uh, overcoming those the obstacles, isn't it? And um, uh, when you say I can't do it, I can't do it. Um, I think we had one of our Actors last night were saying she she couldn't find it, she couldn't do it, she couldn't get something on the tech. But we kept pushing, and and in the end, she did it. So do you um obviously that comes from your background that you just talked about. So you bring that to your training and your coaching and your acting. Um, uh, and that's what's great about life. Sometimes, uh, in my podcast here is about late bloomers. So the actors like myself have started in their forties. So do you see that a lot? The same sort of thing. The actors are bringing their life experiences, whether they're young or older and bringing it to what they mm. put on screen? Um, yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, I, I do and I know I think m most actors relate to their their life because sometimes you can draw from it. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes there's things you don't want to draw from because they cause a little too much emotional um, pain, you know, but you can do it safely and acting, yes. I mean, like last night, the, the lady you were talking about, 
she was elated when she simply worked out where she could find the script on her <laughs> her app. I mean, she was so excited because she's, you know, a, a late bloomer again. And for her to be able to do that, and it was nothing to do with the actual acting skills. It was simply she could she just kept going, can't find it, can't do it. And as mm. you know, I just said, you can just stop doing that, just stop it. I said, you will find it. It's need to calm down. And she found it and she was jumping up and down like she just won a million bucks. But that's that's the good part, you know? Yes. Um, mm. Yeah. And, no, you just, and look, we're all busy. Like you, you're on the course. You know how busy it gets. And oh, yeah. uh it really does push you to do a lot more in your day and it's not about getting anything right. It's just about doing the work and then eventually when that mindset comes in, you'll start to really see improvements in the work you're doing without worrying about are you getting it right in that particular moment, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, just sort of going back to your start of your acting career, what made you take up acting and, uh, and can you remember what your first role was? Uh, nothing. I didn't have no. I didn't have any intentions of being an actor. Um, I started at uh, 39 um, through the wrestling because being a pro wrestler in Adelaide, they were wanting pro wrestlers for a Hungry Jacks commercial. So I got that, and that's when I went. Oh, this was pretty cool fun. So that's how it started. But uh, all the things that you know have happened in in my life uh, have not been through staying in the one place, one job, one place. It's always been. Um, moving like uh uh when i left school you know at an early age i went and got a job at myers through my dad's help and uh sadly i got sacked and made him look a bit silly because uh, um, he knew the ceo of myers but i got i was just oh, just doing stupid stuff mate you know i let them stink bombs off in the cafeteria in the main cafeteria in myers so they didn't go down too well i thought it was hilarious we used to stage um fake fights in the alleyway during our lunch hour. We go to Bernard's Magic Shop and get wow. blood capsules and pretend we're having a fight and people would <laughs> be walking past looking. So so I guess never wanting to be an actor, it was always there. There was something in me that was in that, you know, performance. I was good at getting out of trouble because I could make stories up really quickly. That's um, awesome. I remember one of my friends at school said, geez, dude, he goes, how on earth did you just think of that then when the teacher asked? I said, oh, no, I just don't want to get into trouble, you know. Um, so yeah, it was, my dad used to take me to a lot of theater plays, pantomimes, uh, you know, probably because he was trying to calm me down. Um, I think a lot of that was it. Uh, so when I look back, it was already being installed in me, unknown to me or my dad actually. Um, and then when I took up acting, I loved it. It was just really quite natural, you know? That's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And you did um you did a role on Bad Boy Bubby, which was filmed here in Adelaide, didn't you? No, oh, that was I think that was Long I think that now. was my very first film. Mm. I'm, I'm pretty sure because I know when I joined up with Spotlight Casting, um, Angela Heesom, who's you know still doing it, and Lynn Pike um, from Adelaide. Uh, I think Bad Boy Bubby might have been my very first feature with. Um, um, Oh, gee whiz. I just forgot his name. I was just about to say it. Uh, heck. Um, anyway, it was fun. We're just sticking out the roof of this uh, panel van and yelling at uh, the main actor, and that was mm. it. And then it went to, I think, the next feature I did, my first big feature with Dialogue, which was not long after I started acting, was uh, with Ben Mendelsohn, um, Frankie J. Holden, uh, in Return Home. Um, awesome. Geez, that would have been young good. too. <laughs> oh good man that was ages ago I still yeah. had hair it was black it was long and I think it was actually when I was talking to Ben on um, Animal Kingdom when I had a bit of a role in that I think that Return Home was his first feature and I'm not quoting that I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure he said that was his first feature so we sort of followed paths to Animal Kingdom and then Cody got to work with Ben in uh, Slow West in New Zealand so awesome. I, I said to Ben it's really cool that we all got to work together you know yeah, over all those years, it's great that it sort of keeps coming back around. So, um, and with your acting, you've sort of juggled um, between both uh, US roles and Australia. So, so how do you manage that? Um, you just sort of, as you said, you were going from job to job. So, you're just um, ready to move when you need to move and you just go where the work is? Um, yeah, just to be honest, yeah, I haven't had work for uh, two years because of COVID. Mm. Um, just before I left the US recently, I started getting away, like I was probably knocked over about 12 auditions. Um, 
got uh, booked on one job in Kansas. Uh, I got a couple more later in the year, but I can't. I couldn't do the one in Kansas because it conflicted with me coming back here. But I've, you know, some this is, America worked for me in the early years uh, when I was there. The first five years, it was great. Um, and then I was coming back to Australia for a lot of work, so it took me out of the loop, and uh, that's a dangerous thing in any acting circles. You know, you got to get yourself back in, especially in yeah. America. You know. Um, but it, it was okay. It's, it's just had its path to go. And now I'm back here and literally only been here. What's today been here seven days and I'm already in rehearsals. I've already knocked over an independent film, which is going to be a, a lead up to a feature awesome. and just waiting for, um, auditioning tomorrow for a big, uh, com- commercial in, uh, Sydney and, uh, just waiting for all the details for this other film in, in Sydney and teaching. So everything's just. Like it's as soon as I've come back home, it's just all picked up again, which is great, you know. I love it. It's keeping you very busy, and um, and with your training, uh, that your you, your program you call aptly called uh, the Actors Intens- Intensive, excuse me. Uh, your your big focus is taking uh, actors outside of their comfort zones, as we were talking about before, and pushing through tasks that you know. Initially, I felt it. The other felt, actors have felt it. But we have. We think that we've got no hope of completing when we look at our day ahead of us and we say, "Cheers!" And he's up all night. And have you seen to... today's work? I have. have you I seen have. Today's work. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on days off now, so I've, my stress levels are a bit lower because, um, like the last couple of days, we've had um, a bunch of self tapes to do for you, and I've been on five a.m. starts mm. for ten hour days. So, um, and I think I had a big um, uh, chat with you on uh, WhatsApp and and said what I was going through. <laughs> Um, I almost looking for excuses not to do it, but um, I, but as I said to you, I didn't want to let you down. It was more about saying I'm going to get it done, but I might not meet your schedule, and I, I just didn't want to let you down. Mm. And you, you understood that, so that's good. But how um, how do you bring your training to actors over the four weeks? How do you see your teachings improving the abilities of actors? What's your goal set to pass on to people? Um, <laughs> so first of all, the the thing that I make. Um, make really clear to the actors is that um, I'm not dismissing or wanting them to forget what they previously learned, whatever, whatever methods they've had more, the method thing's probably a little bit more bigger in the States. Well, it is here in Australia, it's slowly starting to creep in, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, which is great. I, I say to actors, don't think that this course is about removing whatever you've learned in whatever method you've done. It's not about that. This is about you just the, the old analogy quotes of getting off the couch, being uncomfortable or being, being uncomfortable, being comfortable, being uncomfortable, getting out of the stands, getting on the court. They're all great quotes, but at the end of the day, it's just getting you to do a lot more creative work over four weeks as we build up over the weeks and to really push it so that your cup is overflowing. Um, and you've somehow got to get that overflowing cup and have another cup there. So that, pours into that cup so you've got another cup so that's not being wasted you know like exactly. so you're just making it work you're not mm. letting it go to waste like the overflowing cups running all over the bench you're putting something there to take that out and put it in here so you've made oh okay i've still got that cup now this one's filling up you know mm. silly analogies but that's the only thing i can think of no I love um, it. and it's just loads and loads of creative work like everything i can throw at the actors and the first rule is I don't want you trying to get it right or perfect. And that doesn't it takes people a while to get around that because they think they have to get it right because if they're doing auditions, I, and I just say, but you're not doing auditions, you're pushing yourself to stop thinking. And I'm pretty sure by now that you get it, that if whatever I send you, you just do it. And all of a sudden you go, mm. oh, that wasn't actually too bad, you know, because you've not got all this stuff stopping you. Yeah, it, it, it seems to, um, it gives you a bit of freedom, um, some of the recordings we've mm-hmm. done for the self-tapes, because I do self-taping every month um, through my drama school, uh, stagemilk.com. And I'm, yeah, I'm very meticulous with that, trying to make it audition perfect, perfect and, and meeting all the guidelines of, of if you're actually submitting a self-tape. So having that freedom of just jumping mm-hmm. on, on camera and just delivering something um, was awesome. And, and we did that with you, some scenes where you gave us, direction to do something that was just had my eyes rolling at first going how the hell are we going to do that we had 
three people mm. talking over each other without giving away any secrets. Um, but it was almost liberating. And you said the what you saw at the end of the three actors, they were so free and easy in their delivery and they were still delivering the lines. So it was still meeting the requirements yeah. of the scene. <clears throat> and what you said is very true. You have to, um, when you get an audition, you've got to follow what they tell you. Don't start making it. They, they've written in red in certain areas in red for a reason mm. so that you don't go off in your own tangent. It says that's how we want it. That's the only thing in an audition you really got to make sure of whatever they've told you to do, you do it. Then the rest is up to you. Like you don't change the words, you don't change the scene, but you've seen that in the class that Whatever words you're given, you can. So we're sort of branching out a bit more in the class, but in the audition, <laughs> you could get um, you could get how many people, just say ten people reading that scene, and they're all going to do it different, even though they're the same words. And that's what the casting process is. They're looking. Well, I I, I imagine I'm not a casting director, but I'm assuming after my years of experience that they're just looking for someone who's either a little different, but they're still sticking to the storyline, but they've added something slightly different, which can go, wow, that was actually didn't think of that or didn't see that. And I've heard mm. that a lot. So it's being free to make what they've given you your own. That's how I say it, whether it's correct that's or awesome. not, I'm not sure, but yeah. <laughs> sort of uh, works. Now, I'm mindful of the time because I know you've got another um, engagement to go to. So um, yeah. just a couple of quick questions and then we'll let you go. Uh, in your it's 30 years of, or more of acting now, you've, you've obviously met and worked with a huge range of actors um, from all walks of life, so experience and ages. Do you have uh, experience with actors who have become successful later in their lives, who have started uh, in their 40s like myself? And uh, what do you think contributes to their success um, outside of, you know, the younger actors have gone through the process of drama school and climbed the ranks, so to speak? Um, yeah, I wish I could answer that, but I can't. Because <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just think it's luck. It's um, timing. Timing's everything. Just, you know, starting, like, I w couldn't see myself starting acting in, in my 20s because I just wasn't willing to do that and it never uh -huh. was in my mind. Uh, but I don't know. I just think timing. You know, timing's right time right place right circumstance that can drive people in or you have people you know that just want to act so they leave school and they go into acting schools and a lot of them don't make it you know and that's mm. a fact you know it's a lot don't make it do they not make it because of their skill level i don't know do they not make it because they're sick and tired of waiting and quit i don't know um everyone's got a different story but uh it's a fact that there's a lot more actors out of work than there is working but Having said that, I don't think that's any reason to give up. If you've got a great job, a part-time job, because you need that, you need a part-time job if you're going to take up acting, you yeah. know, when you start working, because you can't possibly have a nine-to-five job. It's not going to work. Yes. Um, so if you've got your financial side set up, and I really push this for actors, um, that you don't have to worry about money. You've got my, I, I was here in Craigie Ben. I was a duty manager at Brody and Craigie Ben Leisure Centre for 10 years. I started off as a lifeguard. Uh, there are only four hour shifts. I was heading off to doing work here and there. I've always had, I had my own business, uh, scrap metal business in Adelaide. I had a lawn mowing round. Wow. <laughs> I was bouncing. I was doing security. So, you know, I had a ton of part of Uber driving, Lyft driving. I'm not ashamed to say it. Like, Anyone who makes something of that is someone who's got insecurities themselves. Because, yeah. and and when I was doing Uber <laughs> and Lyft in America, um, I and in Australia here, I scored uh, three jobs, like three films. One of them won six awards at the Hollywood Shorts Film Festival. I met the dude from uh, picked him up in Uber one day at uh, Fox Studios, and I did the same here in Australia a few years ago. Things were quiet, so I started driving again. Met a guy, bang! I got three of my my one of my best mates on. He's now doing stunt coordinating for this director who does mainly commercials, but he Love also it. does films. He wants a feature film coming up. I just did his little uh, short on the weekend over three days, uh, which is going to be a lead up to a feature. My friend uh, Tony Nichols, who was doing the stunt coordinating, uh, he only met him because I drove this guy home one night. It was a it was a forty minute drive from the city 
we're talking about acting and he said, oh man, he said, you'd be great for one of my commercials. I've got a short film coming up. And for some reason I mentioned Tony, I think I was talking about coaching and teaching how Tony's done amazing. And I said, he sort of lives out this way out North and 40 minute drive. You're not going to believe it. When I dropped this guy off, he lived three houses away from Tony. Wow. So, you know, and that's how they became friends and they've been collaborating ever since. And, uh, you know, I, I, the, I said it before, I never stand still. I don't care what I've got to do. I've, I've, people go, oh, so you drive Uber or, oh, so you've got a part-time job. Yes, mate, I've been, I've never not had a job since I left school. Love like, it. Mm. And s- sadly, some people try to make something out of, oh, but you've done amazing jobs. No, listen, hold it. I'm just a dude who made a mess of a lot of shit in my life and thank God for acting and my faith and trying to work through and be a better person and, recreate relationships with family again, which I've done, you know, and, you know, you have a roller coaster of life. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm pretty stupid. I couldn't build a house, mate. I can't even measure. <laughs> I failed everything. Oh. I couldn't even make a picture frame at school. But the point I'm getting at is most actors have to have a job. So I find the jobs that suited me that I, I loved working at the Craigie Burn and Broadley Leisure Centre and I still worked. I, I was already been acting for 15 years or something 20 years and I found now through America and here that I've made I've got a really wonderful friend who's a producer from 405 Productions in the States another guy producer from Warner Brothers I met them all driving wow and I've made (laughs) uh, amazing friends I've got probably eight really good friends uh, over there so you know uh, all I can say is don't judge people you know, for no. what they do. And especially, like, I remember there's one actor, I'm not going to mention his name, but I've worked with him and he's a great actor. And there's one time he's going through some t- tough times. We all go through that. Yeah, Everybody, definitely. Especially after COVID. Yes. And he was cleaning. They spotted him cleaning and they took photos of him and said, oh, look, his acting career's finished. Fuck you, mate. You oh, know, that's, like, that's yeah. what people do. Mm. It just sucks. Like, you're, they're normal people. A, I tell you, I remember when I was with my dad in Box Hill um, going past a chemist. I was only about 11 or something, and um, I went past the chemist, and I went, Dad, I said, the, the, the guy, the pharmacist down there, probably didn't say that word. I was, probably said that guy. He was behind the counter in his white coat. He was a huge actor. He was on everything, mate, from Division 4 to Homicide, all those great Australian shows. And I said, Dad, why on earth is he working in the chemist? And he went, because he probably needs another job. He's not always working. And and that's when I went, oh, okay. And then when I became an actor, I get it, mate. You know, Makes always sense. had a job, second job. Yeah, yeah. well, you, the, bills don't, the bills don't just come in when you've got an acting job, do they? You've still got to eat from week to week, so. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's, uh, no, there's no loss of pride in that, mate. There's no, no loss of pride in that. No, know? definitely not. And that sort of um says to all actors it doesn't matter about their age it, it doesn't always well it doesn't come down to just your talent or your look it can be just purely a, a sliding door moment can't it? if you're in the right place at the right mm-hmm. time and the right door opens up then timing that's awesome well um andy uh, thank you very much um it's very quick but very insightful and that's uh, what i love um so thank you for coming on the podcast. I was I was really excited to be able to do this right in the middle of the training with you. I thought that made so perfect sense. Yeah. So thank you. Um, before we do go, where can people find you on social media or find information about the course so they can do it in the future? Um, I guess, you know, like um, uh, they can just uh, find me on um, Facebook. You know, it's, it's the photo of Cody and myself. It's just Andy McPhee. There's... There is a couple of Facebooks with Andy McPhee on there. They're ones I don't use anymore. I actually got to get rid of them. But the one that people can find me on is the one with myself and Cody together, the picture of me and him. That's awesome. the one I use all the time. And you, you share um, um, you share a picture on a lot, most of the um, acting groups um, when you're running the next course, which is how I found you on the Adelaide uh, Actors and yeah, Extras yeah, page. Yeah, yeah, so. I put it on those groups, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Or they, awesome. Can, yeah, they can contact me at... Uh, uh, act, what is it? The actors intensive one at gmail.com. So that's the actors intensive one at gmail.com. One of you your, um, there too. one of your half dozen yeah, emails. One of, <laughs> one, of, one of my half dozen emails. <laughs> yeah. We go back to what we said at the start of the podcast, talking about technology and that. And um, we were starting to look like those um, 
uh, non-tech wizards trying to get online, weren't we? So, but we made it. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> All right, <laughs> uh, Andy, thank you very All much. Right, um, I, I reckon I've got a, a few tasks to complete on my schedule today, so I better get yeah. on to it. That, yeah, mate, you better get on to it. <laughs> that Andy McPhee, he can be a, a, a tough uh, taskmaster, can't he? <laughs> I love your work. Thank you very much um, for coming on board, and um, I'll, I'll see you online next. Awesome, buddy. Take care, love mate. your work. See thank ya. you. Well, that was certainly very insightful. It was, it was great um, for Andy to open up about his journey in the younger years of his life and, and how that made him the actor he is today. I didn't mention it in the interview, but I, I think we could almost say Andy is a late bloomer actor himself, having started in his late 30s or early 40s. He's shown that that journey can still be a successful one, even starting later. I do love how he touched on the, you know, the almost randomness of the acting journey and how it can simply be just sharing a ride with the right person that might open an acting door. And also, no matter how many doors failed open for you, it's no reason to quit. You know, just keep enjoying the journey regardless and um, a door will open when it's ready to open. As I mentioned, uh, I'm halfway through Andy's course at the moment, the actors intensive at the time of this recording and it's certainly an eye-opening experience. It's very different to many other courses I've done in the past. Uh, initially, I couldn't see how our task related to improving my acting abilities at all, but you know, quickly, pretty much after the first week, they all started to make sense and, and roll in and, and just came together. And I feel I'm certainly seeing uh, improvements now when I deliver another self-tape for Andy, of which he keeps asking for them. So <laughs> definitely uh, intensive. I've reached out to um, some fellow course participants and just as a testimonial to Andy's course, uh, here are a few comments made. Uh, they're certainly worth hearing if you're considering the course in the future. Uh, here's one. I, I came into Andy's course looking for something a little different to all the other courses I've done in the past. And Andy is a way of pushing you outside of your comfort zone at first doing tasks that you didn't know how they will improve you as an actor. And then bam, all of a sudden it just takes hold and makes sense. And suddenly you deliver a scene in such a fresh way. Another one here is a, is a great experience and I am identifying my weaker acting areas and upgrading my skill and pushing my boundaries. Also, I found that this course is helping me to focus on getting out of my head and into action and focus on getting things done rather than dreaming about doing the work but being afraid of failure. Andy's course has allowed me to get out of my head. It's allowed me to do lots and lots of work and, and not be afraid or judge what comes out of my creative mind. I like that one. So these are just a couple of comments on the positives of working with Andy and it shows a great insight into how actors can learn new ways of thinking to move through barriers and gain new traction. I'll put some uh, links to Andy's Facebook on the, in the show notes so you can follow him and find out when the next course is being run. I, I certainly recommend it as you can no doubt tell through this episode. Hey, thank you to all my regular listeners. Uh, as I've mentioned in the past episode, I, I now have a dedicated email address. So if you'd like to drop me a message uh, to show your support or if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, uh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, let me know at the late bloomer actor, all one word, at gmail.com. That's the late bloomer actor at gmail.com. Uh, don't forget to throw a rating for the podcast on your podcast player of choice. Leave a review if you can or register with www podchaser.com and rate and review the podcast there and if you can share the podcast on your social media let your friends know that you're listening and hopefully they'll jump on board once again thank you for listening guys and hey i'll see you on set <laughs>